I can have yours as well. Uh, finally got in touch with the motor rewind guy. Yeah, it's still not worth fixing the motor. It's small or big. Even for a smaller ones, the little th little ones like this, even in a small motor, less copper in them, still expensive to rewind. So, gave him the specs for this motor, and yeah, the crate was like, uh, well, it was 200 bucks for the copper alone. You gotta get the spools of copper for it, and not the right ones. And then you gotta, uh, the insulation costs and the labour, it's about 600 bucks. So, I might as well buy an expensive board or a high end single phase motor for that price. So, probably when you live in the West, in India, though, there's plenty of YouTube videos in it of Indians in wanting motors. It's cheap over there. Anyway, back to my camera was about to go for that. But as I was saying, was it's, it's far cheaper to buy an even an expensive brand motor now. So if you're going to buy a new electric motor, electric motor, just buy an expensive top end brand. And that is still just as much as a, getting an old motor rewound. No matter what size or um, single or three phase it, it is, even with this one, it'd be expensive. Bit of a shame. But as I said about India, they seem to care more about the planet rather than economical thinking. Because yeah, they just fix up the old burnt out motors, even if they're just completely stuffed. They just scrape all the burnt stuff out, give them a sandblast and a paint, and yeah, they just they just rewind them like that. Some even do it by hand. There's plenty of videos on YouTube of uh, Indians doing that. So the videos are all, most of them are all in Hindi, but they seem to I uh, think uh, more about the. Um, saving the planet more than the economical perspective like here in the West. We always throw stuff away. Speaking of throwing stuff away, I got more meter scores. I could have got a lot more than this, but one of the uh, arrogant bastards, as the meter, meter guy said, at the depot is I'm smashing them all. Uh, BAZs, uh, SDs, other meters like this, all getting smashed. The bosses are there, just see, just smashing them all. Yeah, there was Made and made ago, I was telling me a story there. Um, a lot of these bosses of these uh, electrical joints are really, really arrogant. They don't seem to have any respect, so I would love to smash a BAZ or an STM over their head. Knock them out cold, mate. They'll split their skull. These things are that heavy. Yeah, it's just the. Uh, yeah, he was telling me the mentality has just gone downhill. There's a young bloke like, coming out of university now, one of the uh, depots in Melbourne. Yeah, he's just uh, trying to get all the old experienced people fired. It's a bit stupid, but eh, there's no future under socialism, so that's just the future for this country. Maya 96. Mmm, smells like it too. Nice time switch. The seal is not adequate to close it. You can see there, it's too long, I can still open it. <laughs> nice old uh, Wobbleton Frankie too. Wobbleton WF2. We have another box which is too heavy, it's got transformers at it, but I'll probably get that next time. Another one of these is meters. this one belonged to AGL. Uh, another AGL email metering. M3, a newer one. 2007. That's a late model uh, analog email meter there, Australian mate. Another ISCRA, no, never been used. Wow. And it was also saying um, death rays in New South Wales are hard to get uh, stuff off. But at least in New South Wales they seem to keep the old meters because I know the new meters are junk. They sort of got brains over there. But here in the Socialist Republic of Victoria, no. Nah. Anything goes, even if it doesn't, it doesn't go physically. But it doesn't make sense. Alenta Energy, made in Indonesia, Hectaris, which is those, uh, those are currently being produced. Just a... Just a a cheap budget uh, meter. So if your smart meter blows up, I'll install one of these, basically. Actaris, they make water meters too. Twenty-one thousand and sixty-one kilowatt hours. Eight hundred impulses per kilowatt hour. Hundred amp. These meters are also good for test meters, and in the such, you can just have them mounted at any angle. These are great for real-time loads. So you're going to have them on a like my BAZ for example, steady and level. But those little uh, electronic ones are really good for um, portables. 
great for that. Oh, another one of these um, D4Es. 78. I've got, all the, I've got most of the terminal covers too. That's off that one. Yep, the matches. <laughs> the brown paint. Oh, I've got their terminal covers, mate. And this one. Oh, what's this one? A lettuce and guy. Lattice and guy, dual tariff. Aussie made. Dual tariff meter. Nice. 1506 style. Just in. It says here six numbers. A property of Footscray City Council. Anyway. Right, dual tariff. Um, uh, SDM. SDMR. This one's a WFC. Another WFC there. WFC there. Another dual tariff. 993. Last year uh, recertified. Nice. And I got these ECV boxes too, which also get thrown in the bin. Nice. I've got three of these now. One from the very first score on these two from yesterday. Electricity Commission in Victoria. No longer exists. Anyway, not a big lot this time, but um, yeah. Had the uh, arrogant bastards had not been there. So um, I've probably got a lot more. I've probably got another. The last two scores would have been two yeet loads, but unfortunately there's um there's too much disrespect and arrogance in the uh, industry now. As he said himself, he sees no viable future, so sad really. It's all gone to shit everywhere. Anyway, I um, probably should do some more metering videos, but I'm um, just having just had a lot of uh, things to do, busy with work, other things like that. You just uh, fade with this, it runs nice and good now. I'm thinking of making a turntable with it, or um, if I get a shredder and just put this on it. <laughs> shredder, that'd be good for that. Oh, another thing. I uh, got this poly tightened up because it kept slipping, but I, um, yeah, it was cracked and it broke, unfortunately. So what I'll have to do is get a steel plate, the same width as that, an inch, and bend it around the U-shape and drill holes, and that plate will clamp over that. And that'll be the uh, repair. And I've got that pulley off that other motor I put it on here, just put that out of belt that's um, long enough. The ratio anyway for that compressor it has to be a big pulley. That's just uh, that's the whole it will fit. No other belt's gonna fit it now. That probably is only just, just for a test. Anyway, the uh, solar system's going nice. I turn these on on a good sunny day to keep the batteries on them fresh, to keep them new. And uh, here, this battery here, the update, that's come up nice and good. Tests really good now. Awesome. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, viewers, well, now I've got this sub uh, speaker reframe kit. Um, I picked up another set of speakers just like that, same brand TIAC, and they're in really good condition, and the woofers have got foam lock. And the stereo I come with, oh my god, it's AM stereo with a sequam, I've had to have that. Bloody got it for next to nothing. Speakers, the stereo system's complete. There the speakers there, oops, into the door. TIAC, they're the same speakers as those ones out there, but these are a little bit more I think there's a more high end, uh, mid range and low range, a uh, high range. Better quality drivers that are grilled. Here's a woofer. So I'm going to reframe these ones. I reframe these first and put them, these, I'm going to replace those. So I'm going to get another uh, reframe kit for these ones because they, um, because it's got this damage here from the birds. I need a, a reframe kit with a longer lip in the inside to cover all this mess up. I'm going to pack and mash all this and just uh, rebuild that missing bit. But I want to get a, a reframe kit with a longer lip on the inside so I can cover all this. Give it a good, make it look good. It'll probably hide that first ridge, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do it about that, but we'll see how we go. This uh, kit here has got a short lip on the inside. So that's two there, that there's two woofers. 
So we'll keep this two of them there, and they will fit perfectly in place to repair both the woofers and both these uh, cabinets. I just pulled these grills off for the very first time, and there was a lot of foam that fell on the carpet. I had to vacuum it all up. So no one's ever pulled these off ever, which is a good sign. That will go there. That'll be perfect. So that little lip will fit along here. Now I can't go behind, but I'll find if I put the lip on the top, it's easier and it just doesn't matter really. It's um it doesn't affect the acousticness performance of the speaker. It still sounds really good, like original. That's all part of the um, basket too. The uh, stereo system is the same power, 50 watt per channel. There's only two speakers here, not four. And it's, uh, it's not a um, separate modular system though, it's just all one big uh, uh, component system. But this one's made in Japan too, not Korea. So it's uh, higher end, like it's a good old TAC. So that kit would be both those speakers. So that's all out of the way, I can do those. Oh, that sounds so nice. I can't wait to try them on here. Here's the actual stereo system, the wet with those speakers. It all works. This one comes with a CD player. AM stereo CQAM. As soon as I see that, oh man, I've got to have this. But this whole thing was only 30 bucks, which is a bargain. This needs belts, but I'll fix that. You see, it's all one system. It looks like a stack. So this would be the very first of that concept. As soon as they became like this, and made them like that, they just chuck. So I'm going to get the belt to place in this. I'll do that. Clean the cassette mechanism up, clean all the heads up. Dust out the CD player. All made in Japan. You have your phone. Oh, it does have a phone input. Okay. CD, video. Well, auxiliary input, the ground, case getting interference, 12 volt output, which I could use for a Bluetooth speaker, it runs off 12 volts, I plug it straight into to here, to any of those inputs, to dual purpose input. It's only really has two, so you put the, this in here, your CD player is going to sound too loud, because it's a front of input, there's a low level input. You plug your CD in there, and I can plug a Bluetooth receiver in there, off 12 volt, and just stick it to the back and just turn it down so it sounds good. There's an app, uh, AM antenna it clips on there. 240 watt power consumption, same as the other one I've got, so it'd be 50 watt amp before I this, although it's not as heavy. Made in Japan, so it's a good old TAC. So this CD player will also match the other one I've got, PD230. Different model, but it matches the other one that came in here. Check that out. I am stereo. You don't see that. And this will sound bloody awesome. I only had two speakers. Your speakers A and B. A were the big ones. I think B were just little ones. Just uh, they didn't come with all big speakers, so B would have been something small and crappy for the B channel. But either way, I got enough speakers and they use all the same big speakers. This is going to sound nice. A proper actual CD player. So, as I said, I could use a Blu-ray or DVD player, just as good, but this is probably a much more reliable option in the long term because, hey, you can see the CD in there spinning, that's cool. You don't get that in Blu-ray or DVD players, or the normal trailer ones anyway. As I said, DVD players and Blu-ray players, you know, they work and they don't work, they don't last very long, so this will last. Yeah, this is good quality stuff. I bought this smartly for the stereo, but then I said the speakers. Oh man, they're good speakers. So I'll fix those up. I gotta build it. I gotta get an AM stereo transmitter kit. Because, yeah, there's a good um, collector community of AM stereo gear. Seek one, which is the most. The Motorola's patent for encoding and decoding of the signal. It's a popular, very popular, especially in North America and uh, Canada, or say, well, in America and Canada, same thing really. If I get one of those kits on this thing, oh my god, this is going to sound awesome at AM. Having a transmitter, I can just transmit my uh, Spotify or anything like that over AM. Stereo would sound amazing. Something like this anyway. 
So we've got a dummy recorder race head down then. Uh, yeah, it did belt, so I can fix that though. This will clean up all right. Automatic recording level control. That's the first tape deck I got that has that. So I can um, not have to worry about the tape being overdriven or too loud or too quiet on the, uh, the recording. A or B, not both. Speakers B only, speakers A only. Oh, this isn't the surround sound one. The other one I've got to come out of here is the surround sound. You can have A and B speakers at the same time. This, no, one or the other. So the amplifier isn't as good. LED backlit, that's what they call. Heavy duty filling buttons. So the main reason I got this whole system here because of the AM stereo. I got it for the speakers too, but I grabbed this as well since it's AM stereo. That stuff's really collectible. Sounds good. This is when Tech were, were making good stuff. Anything Tech nowadays is just bloody rubbish. I wouldn't even plug a Bluetooth speaker in my turd. <laughs> yeah, shit like this. Just junk, don't worry about it. You see stuff like that, just keep the speakers and just part of the throw the rest out. So these things, just, modern systems are absolute junk. Unless they're Panasonic, which are the only ones I've seen that are reliable. But this, no, don't worry about it, junk. Anyway, I'll clean all this up and use this set airplay in there and test that. That'll fit in any system. quite happy with that. <laughs> you don't see that much. That wasn't very common in Australia. Nowhere near as it was in America at the time, which was in the 1984, I think it launched. 84 to 87 or something. That's how long it went in Australia for, I'm pretty sure. But the uh, radio stations to um, transmit on that band, FM didn't have the market share. I think it was to do with the market share to have FM to get good business on FM for radio stations and yeah, there's a bit of story behind why AM stereo never really caught on. It's a shame. Cause it just, yeah, give you, would have given you so much more, um, yeah, better sounding on AM. Like the old classics would sound good even in mono, but when they play the newer stuff on AM, which the new, some new music is, is good. The old good song they play would sound pretty good on AM, but as I said, the, uh, Technology the costs just got in the way unfortunately. So I can plug this uh, system here, where I got plugged in here, or I can plug this one into the TX system for the record player. Sounds good. Works out to be good. All that, I can plug that into it as well. It's just got all the outputs for it. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. Thank you view as well. Turn that down before I get in trouble. I've uh, cleaned a lot of switches in this thing. Got the and the dust for compressed air. It's filthy. I just gave what a slide controls a uh, good going of the This thing works much better. I've um, got some rubber renew on the belts. Turns out the motors are just friction stiff, but they're freed up now. They're not noisy. They still sound nice and quiet, so it's a good thing. Trouble when you're fixing stereos like this, you've got to take the whole front fascia off and unplug everything just to fix up the belts on the cassette mechanism. Although this has got plenty of room in there, so which is good. I've got that motor running just so it can stay freed up. Yeah. The motor's still going, but there's no torque on the belt. That's why I put some rubber on you on there. That one works alright. The flywheel goes, but the take up's a bit. Yeah, it's getting better. The motors were just, uh, the motors just stiction. The whole mechanism was all stuck with stiction. It wasn't going to, I gave the flywheels and the capstans a good kick and spin on my finger, and they took off, so it's just stiction. That one would be wrong override, but if I'm not recording, this unit turns off. So I can't record a uh, player taping that fast, but I can on this one. Auto tape selector, normal. When I put a cassette in there, it goes to normal mode. Metal mode, by default, normal. That works all right. Always give me a little tickle. Tickle these little switches of your finger. Because sometimes they can um, be dirty and not record a player tape correctly. 
probably noise reduction. Ah, uh, they've got to check the slide switch actually. The recording switch, I forgot to give a spray. That's in there somewhere, actually no. There is no mechanical recording playback switch in this uh, deck. Interesting. Hmm, I've got some lot of rubber body over the vintage smell of this thing. Strong smell. Okay, how's the record going here? Is there a switch on the deck itself, maybe? I wonder where the record switch is. Oh, it's a leaf switch. Okay. If I play with that leaf switch. Wait for switch in there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, what are you looking at there? I'll just play with it like that. It doesn't sound like it's gotten dirty. A little leaf switch in there for the record. A wafer switch, I mean. The heads are kind of cool. It's only got a set of portion of the head that touches a tape. Interesting tape head. Same with the other TAC tape deck has got. Yeah, just the metal portion of the head's raised. Interesting, not the whole complete head itself. Just the metal section touches the tape. Got a dummy recording or a racing head there, I mean. A racing head. Yeah, I can't pull the tape in there yet, they have to be clean. So I just rested my finger on the capstan and it stopped. So that one's a bit better. I put a bit of pressure on it, it stops the motor. But it takes off on its own with this one. It won't take off, the motor spins. Yeah, that belt's gone. I'll leave them like that for a while to help free up the belts. That'll be a lot like that. Just to get the belts a bit all uh, exercise those belts since they haven't been used for a long time. And the motor date, 7th of March 1986. Panasonic motors. 1986, so that's a, the year this would have been made, mid 80s. So it's a year uh, newer than a system that was in here. This one's from 1985. This one's a year older, uh, a year newer. Interesting, um, yeah, AM stereo, this one. That's what's got going for it, which is cool. AM stereo, yeah, let's love that. Little LED display there. And that's the Motorola chip, MC13020P. RY8515. That's a decoder chip for AM stereo. Nice. It's pretty loud too. As I said, that's the uh, STK4191. That's the uh, output hybrid power module. It's nice and loud. I googled it. It's between 25 and 70 watts. 25 watts per channel. So it's a 70 watt stereo. Pretty good. Big heatsink too, which is really good. Kits are really cool. Probably longer the lifespan. Pretty uh, good how it's turned out. I wonder how that high blend works. High blend for FM. The memory is easy to do. You press your memory button in, a light will come on, press a number, easy, done, you've programmed it. To see to uh, cut power, of course, and it loses that memory. There's no. Uh, no um, super capacitor on this thing either, so once you lose power, you lose your memory. But it's easy enough to reprogram it, so it's not a big deal. These all cleaned up nicely, these all work. That was scratchy, this was scratchy, only both speakers worked on both sides, but now it's working perfectly. A tape counter, looks like I've got to get a belt for the tape counter. Well, where's that belt? I even know where that is, hard to see. Yeah, it's got to be changed. It's just loose. Maybe you've got to put some rubber on you on that too. Yeah, I think so. That one needs some rubber on you on that. Right, I'll rubber on you that dot there. I may, may, I'll probably go and need to change them, but what I might do. Give this rubber when you go first and see how that goes after a while. If that fails, the boiling water trick may fix those belts or just change them all together. It's not hard to do. 
Another guy suggested when I got, when I got this off, he reckons the, um, you can use Lanotech, a CRC, or a thick CRC make it. Well, no, it's a Lanotech, it's a um, lanolin-based lubricant. You use it in food processing equipment. It's like CRC or inox, but it's um, lanolin-based, sheep fat-based. You gotta keep it fresh, it lubricates, but it has a tendency to dry out and go gummy, that stuff. But it actually, yeah, he reckons it works great. Uh, it's like this stuff on rubber. It's kind of cool. Not as toxic as this stuff is. This stuff's uh, fixed up a lot of cool stuff, so it's good to have. Great stuff. Yeah. The motors and soles aren't noisy, so that's a good thing. Just gear noises. Anyway. I'm so sure by the time those belts will improve. I'm just going to keep running them like that to exercise them again. Long time no use. Nice and clean in there. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. I'll just do a cosmetic clean up on this thing now. Thanks for watching.